Hello everyone, I am Shada Sharao and welcome to Sada Learning Hub. Today's session, we are going to learn the most important Java collection interview questions. The first question is, why you override equals method? The equals method is used to check whether two objects are same or not. It needs to be overridden if we want to check the objects based on properly. For example, employee is a class that has a three data members, ID, name and salary. But we want to check the equality of employee object on the basis of salary. Then we need to override the equals method. Why you, why you need override a equals method? The equals method is used to check whether two objects are not, the two objects are same or not. It need to be overridden if we want to check the objects based on property. For example, employee is a class that the that has three data members, ID, name, and salary. But we want to check the equality of an employee object on the basis of salary. Then we need to override the equals method. The next question is: What is the hash collision in hash tables and how it is handled in Java? Two different keys with the same hash value is known as hash collision. Two different keys with the same hash value. With the two different key with the same hash value is known as hash collision. The two different entries will be kept into the single hash bucket to avoid the collision. With the same or two different keys with the same hash value is known as the hash collision the two different entries will be kept into the single hash bucket to avoid the hash collision the next question is what is the dictionary class a dic the dictionary class provides the capability to store key value pairs it is a legacy collection framework if you see here it is a, a dictionary class it contains the different methods this is one there are the three constructor those are the default constructor and parameterized constructor and different methods are available like get template set template get parent template set parent template like those things the next question is what are the practical benefits if any of importing a specific class rather than an entire package. For example, import java.java.net.star java versus import java.net.socket. It makes no differences in the generated classes files since only the classes that are actually used used or referenced by by the generated class files there is another practical benefits to importing a single classes and this ar arises when the two or more packages two or more packages have a classes with the same name take java.util.timer and java.x.swing.timer for example if i import java.util.star and java.x.swing.star and then they and then try to use the timer i get an error while compiling the class name is ambiguous between both packages let's say what you really want was the java.x.swing or dot timer class or the only classes you plan on using the java.util dot util or collections and hash maps in this case some people will prefer to import java.util.collections and import java.util.hash map instead of importing java.util.star this will now allows them to use the timer collections hash map and other java.swing classes without using fully qualified class names in if it is a practical benefits, we can use the import statements, whatever you want in a particular classes. It is a good practice for the program Java programmer. If you import the stars, there is a chance to get the ambiguity. For example, if you take the timer class, the timer class is available in java.util package and as well as java.swing package. 
then this situation it will gives a compile time error the compiler is not able to compile the code because of timer is available in both packages if you mention the timer what package from you want we can mention it it is very easy to do compile the java code java code this will now allow to use the timer collection hash code and other java.util swing classes without using the fully qualified class names in the next question is what is the garbage collection garbage collection is the process of reclaiming the runtime and usage object it is performing for a memory management the java garbage collection is used to manage the memory management and also it clear the unnecessary objects into the from the memory garbage collector is the process of reclaiming the runtime unused objects the next question is what is the difference between collection and collections collection is an interface the collection is an interface whereas a collections is a class collection interface provides a normal functionality of a data structures to list set and queue but collections class is to sort and synchronize the collection elements collection is an interface where and collections is a class collection interface provides a normal functionality of a data structures to list set and queue but collections classes is to sort and synchronized collections elements the next question is how to synchronize list set and map elements yes collections class provides a methods to make a list set map elements as a synchronized if you see here these are the methods available in the collections class to synchronize our list set map sorted set and sorted map like these things the next question is what is the advantages of generic collections if we use the generic class we don't need to type casting it is a type safe and checked at compile time the generic collections is used to uh, we don't want to we do not need to type casting and also type safe and it is checked at compile time whenever we are compiling then only it checks the generics generics finally generics is used for type casting and type safe next question is what is the default size of load factor in hashing based collections what is the default size of load factor in hash based collections the default size of load factor is 0.75 the default capacity is computed as the initial capacity into load factor for example 16 into 0.75 that is equal to 12 so 12 is the default capacity of map the default size the default size of the load factor is 0.75 the default capacity is computed as the initial capacity into load factor for example if you take 16 16 is the map initial capacity and 0.75 is the load capacitor if you see the 0 16 into 0.75 it is equal to 12 so 12 is the default capacity of the map the next question is what are the basic interfaces of java collection framework Java collections frameworks provides a well designed set of interfaces and classes that supports the operations on a collections of objects the most basic interfaces that resides in a java collection frameworks are collection which represents a group of objects known as its elements set which is a collections that cannot contains a duplicate elements list which is an ordered collections and cannot contains a duplicate elements map which is which is an object that map keys to values and cannot contain duplicate keys these are the the basic interfaces in the collection framework first one is set list queue 
DQ and sorted search and coming to the map and sorted map these are the basic java collections thank you so much watching this video hope this lesson helpful to you keep watching our lessons keep writing to us do not forget subscribe our channel sadot learning hub because we have many session that would help you to develop our skills and i will be back soon till then you take care bye bye